Okay, so I think we're done with this temp test file. I'm going to delete this file. Uh, run all tests. Again, we're still building, we're still running. There's no tests. Okay, isn't that that's a nice feature of Google Test there is it can find the tests for us. And, and maybe I'll do a video on exactly how that magic works. But for now, let's move forward and write some tests. We want to do a vector. We need vector for our, our games. We're going to use a lot of vectors. We need a very basic vector class. I told you that needs to go in the engine. So I'm going to add a new item. Header file. Let's call it vector 2D. We could call it vector. 2D, we could call it all sorts of things. I'm going to call it Vector 2D and click Add. It gives me a header file here in the engine. Pound, if and def, engine, Vector 2D, H, Control L, Control VV, Pound Define, Control End, Pound, End If. And we could have all sorts of religious debates. What should be public, private? Should we make getters and setters? Blah, 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 blah. I, there's 101 ways to write a simple two float vector. I'm just going to keep it straightforward and simple, I think. Struct, make it public. It's A vector to me is almost as close to an int or a float as possible. Notice a, a float or an int, those are called atomic types or primitive types because they're the basic building blocks. There's nothing smaller than that. If you think of your house, for example, what are the primitive types used to build your house or your apartment? Well, there's wood, that's a primitive type, nails, uh, drywall, that sort of thing. All these primitive types. So a, a vector to me is almost a primitive type. It's like run little step above it, almost primitive. So let's just make it public and easily accessible, that kind of thing. Vector 2D semicolon, float, we could say i here if we wanted to be really mathematical, i and j, I'm going to stick with x and y, whatever lettering works for you, go ahead and roll with it. And then if I bring back up my my calculator thing I had here before, notice, let's, uh, oops, I don't want to do that, let's bring that down. I'm going to bring this over so we can stretch these vectors out a little bit. What are the operators that I'm I'm supporting on this GUI. Well, I have add. I did subtract. I didn't show you subtract quite yet, but I have add, and I have the scalar multiplication. So let's stub that out here. These are going to be non-member functions. We could do them as members. I'm going to do them non-members simply because the they're, they're binary operators, and I keep, generally keep binary operators as non-member functions. Let's do the uh, vector addition first. So vector 2D, and I'm also feeling a little uncomfortable just putting this out in global space. I'm going to make a namespace here. Namespace math curly closing curly. I'm going to delete this for now. Control A, Control K, F to get it to format for me. All right. So vector 2D operator addition const vector 2D reference left. Let me get the solution explorer out of our face. Uh, down the zoom factor here as well. Left and const vector 2D reference right. And I want to be able to say return vector 2D. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to implement this actually. <laughs> We're doing test driven development. Oh my gosh, I almost committed a sin there with test driven development. It's so natural for me to just go ahead and implement the code. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Let's uh let's just return. I'm going to return a vector 2D. I'm just There you go. Anything plus anything is going to be a vector 2D and notice we're not implementing the constructor explicitly ourselves, so this could this could be probably garbage, right? Uh, we're just gonna. I just want to stub out these functions. What are the other functions we need to do? We got a scalar times a vector. All right. So float. All right. No, no. We're gonna return a vector. Vector 2D. Operator multiply. And float scalar. Const vector reference. Vector. Okay. And uh, again, let's just return vector 2D. Come on, 2D. All right. Trash. And then for reflexivity purposes, I can also say, I haven't done it here in the UI, but if I wanted to, I could say this vector times a scalar on this side. All right, so let's, let's actually allow that in our library as well. Vector 2D operator 
multiply. I guess I could have done copy and paste. Why not? Control L. Professional programmers copy and paste. Right? So should you. No, generally copy and paste is a bad thing. I made a copy and paste error this morning, and it was kind of embarrassing. But let's do it. I'm going to take this, move it over here. So now the vector is the left operand. The scalar is the right operand. And again, do nothing. Return trash. Okay, so we've stubbed out our functions. They're not doing anything intelligent quite yet. But at least now I can write tests against them, and I can use those tests to drive my development. Hence the term test-driven development. I'm going to go back to main here. Oh, not main. Uh-oh, I just... I'm going to have to go... Oh, I just turned on my screen recording software. allowed me to <laughs> draw on the screen. <laughs> How do I turn this off? Okay, I, th I think I have it off. I hit some hotkey there, and I don't know what happened there. I'm going to... Let's add a new item. Let's throw a compilation unit in here. CPP file. What should we call it? We're going to call it vector 2D tests. Add. Here we go. Pound include. Hopefully this looks familiar. G test slash uh, G test dot H. And then I want to test. What are we going to test? These are the vector 2D tests. And I want to test vector addition here. Alright. And then we're also going to make another test. Test vector 2D tests. And I'm going to say it's scalar multiplication. You see how now all of a sudden this isn't, yeah, it's still arbitrary, but it's useful, okay? This is going to give us a hint to which test passed and which test failed and that sort of thing. Okay, vector addition. Let's keep this simple. I want to, first of all, I need to pound include my vector class. So, uh, vector 2D, uh oh. Did you expect that? Why is it not showing up? Can you think why it's not showing up? Pause the video, think about it. Better yet, if you can pause the video and fix it on your own, that's even better. Pause. Okay, that's the include path. Remember, vector 2D is sitting over here in engine land, and our tester, we're not including files from our engine here, so I'm going to go over here, properties, and additionally include directories. So we got gtest. Let's also, let's add another one. It's going to be projector. Go up into engine. And in the engine directory is where it will find our vector class. So let's let's see if that's going to work here. Pound include vector 2d.h. Okay, we're good. Using what did I call it? Math math vector 2d. Okay, here we go. Vector 2d. First, let's keep it simple. One, two. Well, <laughs> we didn't even implement the constructor for vector 2d, did we? Over here, no, we didn't. We didn't make a constructor, and it looks like very quickly I'm going to want to use a constructor. So let's implement one vector 2d. And technically, I should, I shouldn't even implement. I should just stub it out. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's be, let's be test-driven development. Let's, let's do this correctly. Float x, float y, and then I'm going to use an initializer list here, x and y sort of thing. There's a difference between initialization versus assignment. I could very well in the curly say this x gets x and this y gets y. That's assignment versus initialization. Initialization saves some steps when it comes to more complex types. If you want to learn more about that, go watch my uh, constructor initialization videos on my C++ playlist. I'm going to use initialization here. Uh, I think we're good. In fact, I also want to do a default value. 0, 0.0 f. I don't have to do the f if I don't want the 0, 0.0 f. I could just do 0 and let the compiler do it. But I'm going to be a little more explicit here. I know this literal now is a f interpreted at, to the compiler as a floating point literal. Okay, did you notice also the red squigglies here? I forgot 2d on these. Any other places? 2d... Notice the rate squigglies didn't show up until we actually included the header file in a compilation unit over here in vector 2D test. Kind of interesting. All right, so first is 1, 2, and uh, let's do, here we go, test vector 2D. I'm going to test the constructor. All right, so let me just take this control X, put it up here, and uh, okay. So, 
expect equals expect equals I expect first dot x to be equal to one expect ex, uh, expect equal expect first dot y to be equal to two Does that make sense if I pass one in here as the first argument to the constructor Oh, interesting. Interesting. Look at that squiggly we're getting here. Error, no suitable constructor exists to convert from int to math vector 2D. I don't think it's picked up on the fact that we have this constructor now. We can always ask the compiler. Well, this may be IntelliSense just having personal problems, not having caught up to the fact that we added a constructor here. But uh, to verify it, I can just control shift B and see what the compiler really thinks, because the compiler is like the end-all judge in all scenarios. The compiler's happy, IntelliSense is having personal problems, no big deal. If I really wanted to get rid of this red, red squiggly, I could close Visual Studio, reopen it. If that didn't work, which it generally does work, but if that doesn't work, I can go delete the SDF IntelliSense file and then reopen Visual Studio and force it to regenerate its IntelliSense information. Okay, so this should work, should it not? And without even knowing it, I implemented the constructor. <laughs> Maybe that's why test-driven development is so hard, because you have to think backwards from what we're used to. All right, so let's pretend I didn't do that. We have an empty constructor. I've written the tests. I know these tests are going to fail. They should fail, because we haven't implemented the constructor yet. And I'm going to leave these tests blank for now. We'll, we'll come back and implement them. Control F5. Oh, look, it failed. Go figure. <laughs> we knew it failed because I didn't implement it. So this is a good point to check in. All right? If you're working in a team, don't check in because <laughs> you don't want to kill the whole team's worth of check-ins. But working individually, good time to check in. And then I'm going to go back here, re-implement this. Okay, you didn't see this. All right? Now I'm going to go back, run it, get green. Oh, I feel so good. The test, I drove my tests here. My, my, my testing drove my development, so on and so forth. Let's let's see if I can repent here with the operator plus instead. Let's see if I can do a better example there. Notice we're not doing anything. We're just going to return some trash. Let's go down to vector edition here. Vector 2D first, 1, 2. Vector 2D second, 3, 4. And I really, well, yeah, OK. Let's do this. Vector uh, result gets first plus second. I'm actually going to go a little hardcore here. This is result one. I'm going to vector 2D. Vector 2D result two gets second plus first. You see how I'm testing the uh, reflexivity here? I'm just saying, hey, first plus second should be equal to second plus first. So let's do some tests here. Expect. And I'm getting tired of expect equals. It's kind of unnatural for me. I'm going to say expect true. I expect result uh, 1 dot x. Uh, let's see. What is 1 plus 3? That's, that's kind of a hard one there. That should be 4. I'm going to expect true result 1 dot y 2 plus 4 should be 6 okay and then I should also expect true that result 1 dot x is equal to result 2 dot x if a is equal to b and b is equal to c then a should be equal to c okay and uh, expect true result 1 dot y should be equal to result 2 dot y. Okay, so far so good. Are these tests going to pass? Well, obviously, hopefully not. All right, now, now you may think, Jamie, why don't you just go implement the code and then write the tests? But there's a, I, I got this in an interview question one time, and I completely agree with the person that was interviewing me. But he, he basically asked me how would I find a bug if the user came and just said the program crashed, blah, 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 blah. And then when I was done answering his question how I'd find the bug, he said, okay, so how would you test to make sure that that bug didn't come back or for future purposes? And I answered him, I said, well, actually, before I fix the bug, I would write a test that would replicate the bug. 
I would see the red, and then I'd feel good that, yes, that is the problem. And then I would go in, and I would fix the bug, and I'd see the green. So there's it's it's a good thing to get the red before you get the green. You want to see the red. The red means, yes, my tests are set up correctly. And then once you implement your tests, then you can see, oh, my code's good, and also my tests are good. All right? You can make errors testing as well as you can make errors in coding. So it's kind of like a checks and balances system. You, you're double-checking yourself. All right. So also another argument against testing is, hey, this, this code here is going to look like the actual implementation, Jamie. It's... It's, we got pluses here and four and six, but see, I'm actually, I'm actually comparing against the actual values there instead of saying, I, I could go as far as saying, well, expect true result dot result one dot x plus result two dot x is equal to uh, not result first dot x first dot x plus second dot x is equal to result one dot x and I hear this a lot Jamie I'm just writing my implementation here and then I'm gonna copy and paste it over here well yeah in that case I can see why you wouldn't want to eh. if it's worth it to you to do that great if not don't worry about it I'm not gonna worry about it I'm just gonna say hey I know I should get a four and a six here so let's run this we should see red should be scary oh look at the red failed vector addition it failed uh, let's see, result.x equal to 4, that failed. Result uh, 1.y equal to 6, that failed as well. But notice the uh, result 1.x equal to result 2.x didn't fail because of our constructor. Remember we wrote this constructor and, and when we add the vectors, regardless of which one's on the right and which one's on the left, we still return this, this, this default trash temporary object that doesn't have any implementation in it. And so we get we get the zeros. So result one is equal to result two as far as this is concerned because it's all zero. So not the best case, but it is a case. Let me just run this again. We'll see. Let me bring this up here a little bit and get it better on the screen. And here we go. Failed, failed. Let's now the tests are driving our code. This is a test driven development. Let's implement these. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, return a vector 2D with left dot x plus right dot x and left dot y plus right dot y. All right, here we go. Commit, save, all that stuff. Run it. Boom, green, feeling good. Okay. Okay, good. So that's one test, and hopefully, um, I, I kind of it's good to have some tests. I think these tests are a little basic, a little weak. We could really tune these up and start. Notice we didn't do any negative numbers or anything fancy. This is pretty straightforward. Some tests is better than no test, absolutely. But it'd be good. If, what, what other ways can we beat this up? What other ways can you think of to beat up your constructor and your vector addition and so on and so forth? I think we did get a little fancy by having two results and swapping the inputs like this. But but maybe you know uh, let's let's uh, let's add some negatives here. Or how long is this video getting? This video is getting way too long. I'm going to stop here, and in the next video we'll pick up scalar multiplication. Sorry, I let this video drag on just a little bit too long.